and I'd like to invite with the permission of the chair, Professor Hanumanth Komati uh, Reddy and he'll be speaking on digital health and cardiology whereby he today for the next 13 minutes and then we'll take up five minutes of discussion. Professor Reddy, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, since uh, people are hungry and they are out at lunch, so I'll make it extremely sm small, very short. This is my son's presentation. He was not able to come from California, so he asked me to. He just uh, sent, uh, sent the slides only this morning, and I put them together. So it'll be really. This is an exciting topic. Uh, like I said, as a matter of fact, I'm not really worried you went to lunch. You know why? I'll tell you why. In the next uh, 25, 30 years, uh, you'll be sitting anywhere in your home, in your office, in the hospital. Uh, across the globe, somewhere, and then if you want to tune into Dr. Sharma's lecture, which is exciting, uh, you can actually tune in with your wearables. So you, you'll, have a, you'll live in a virtual reality, that means Dr. Sharma, you can see him in California, you can be in Australia, so it's all going to be, the world is getting smaller, and India is well suited for this type of thing. Uh, digital medicine and cardiology, all the wearables, your watch, you'll have a little necklace around your, uh, around your neck, and you'll have a vest, okay, and you'll have a little baby hat, if you want it, and you have glasses, special glasses. You can live, you can go anywhere instantaneously, under the ocean, into the space, anywhere. So this is going to happen, it's already happening. Uh, drivers of innovation, the smaller get, things are getting smaller, miniaturized, more powerful computers, as you're already seeing, you're watching, you're watching it right now, and you have all cell phones and all kinds of chips. The Moore's Law, every, uh, this is kind of a small, uh, hard to see, hard to read, every two years, uh, uh, the, basically, every 24 months, so the chips, so the transistors that can be put into the chips are, are going to double. They, they can put so many transistors on the small chip. That's why you're able to get all those things and miniaturize. Uh, then they go, miniaturize is, is going to be so much that they're going to make nanobots. You know, those small soldiers, like small particles, they send them into your, into your body. They will, uh, they'll be like cops. They'll be co going into coronary arteries, going to the brain. And so they will signal us, oh, this person is going to have a heart attack they will signal, then immediately you will alarm, uh, alert the person, then they will call 911 or ambulance or whatever you, number you have, then they call the doctor. So it, all these are going, already happening uh, at this time. You know, you have the cell phone, you have a, a portable echocardiogram, as you probably have it in your hospital, so you have on the cell phone, you can do the echocardiogram and say, okay, this person has, person has a, a mitral stenosis due to rheumatic heart disease, you have a, you're having heart attack right now, you can do pericardial effusion, uh, you know, and then you have, uh, of course, uh, you have these uh, uh, gadgets on, the, on your near kitchen. You can, you can talk to them and ask them questions. They will talk to you back. And you have watches and all kinds of wearables like, you know, Fitbits and this and that, or Apple Watch. Uh, you have a cell phone cover, you know, the cover of the cell phone, as you know, some of you may have it. You have a, a lead. You hold the cell phone like this and the EKG comes on cell phone and you can diagnose atrial fibrillation or heart attack. As a matter of fact, a heart attack was diagnosed by Eric Topol in the plane one time, he had a cell phone and the guy, guy was having heart attack, they had to land the plane in Berlin, Germany, emergently, STEMI was, he was having STEMI. And you see the glasses here, you see the glasses, uh, special glasses, virtual reality, like with this help of glasses, they can put, they can pull uh, people from all over the world, under the ocean, into, from the space, into one, one podium like this, and you'll see, you'll be the virtual person sitting there, talking to Dr. Sainani, he's just, you can't touch the person, but you can, he's talking to you, talking to you. It's already happening, he just won't tell you. So this is the one, the so-called live, live core. The, the, you have a little cover, not expensive at all. I used to have it, but you know, I don't have it right now. You hold it like this, EKG comes on your cell phone. And you can actually press it, you can sell it, send it to any cardiologist anywhere in the world, uh, in locally. You can do that. Uh, big, and, you know, big and old versus small and new. It's, the, we, it is amazing how much progress we have made in the last, what, 100 years? Uh, in old days, you know, all the EKG was being done, as you can see. Uh, that gentleman's uh, legs were in a salt water and the arms were in salt water. That's how the EKG was obtained. And now you can obtain EKG in a cell phone. What a, what a progress, right? Amazing. I don't know why only in the last 100 years. So now EKG by Alive Core and you can send it by, you know, by your cell phone to the doctor there. And you have a necklace, wear a necklace. You have wearing a necklace you can actually, uh, that will sense your Heart rate, your blood pressure will, will be on your cell phone, on your, on your watch. You can see the blood pressure and heart rate. And if you're pale, you're sweating with a heart attack, it will uh, put all the data together and it will alarm you. You're having a heart attack. Please call your doctor. Call your doctor. So this is coming. Necklace is coming already. Uh, this is what, you know, Apple watch you have and other watches. You know, you have Samsung watch and there are many, many watches. Uh, this person had, was having heart, uh, heart, you know, was having heartbreak and was having excited. Uh, then his heart rate went up. You can 
uh, then you can diagnose atrial fibrillation, take a cardia, SVT with a watch, uh, and then the other stethoscope. Now, some people are wondering, I don't like this, but they think that we don't need stethoscope anymore. We have a, in the wearable in the West, we have a stethoscope here, and you know, in the West has stethoscope here already. And then you can, your heartbeat can be monitored continuously 24 7, and along with your blood pressure, and along with your color, your blood, anemia or not, uh, you're bleeding somewhere, and then, uh, uh, the, all the signals are processed and they will come on your cell phone. It's, ha it's going to happen pretty soon. So now, if you think about the evolution of a stethoscope, Lennox, you know, 1830, 1819, uh, you know, having a little cylindrical tube and you put on your chest, uh, chest wall and like this, you, you heard like this, right? Now, a stethoscope has gotten so much better, electronic stethoscopes, right? Uh, then uh, what about uh, the uh, echocardiogram, then you have a big machine, you're rolling around the hospital, going up the elevator, uh, forget it. So, so Dr. Eric Tober and his group has published paper saying that you can just walk around with a cell phone echocardiogram, you put it on the patient's chest and the echo comes up and then the echo is, that echocardiogram is pretty accurate, more than 95% accurate. So then you can make every diagnosis, so mitral valve, mitral regurgitation, mitral uh, stenosis, pericardial infusion, uh, you name it, you have it. So it's very accurate. Then uh, what about 24-hour hold, hold to monitor? Uh, that's kind of cumbersome, right? So you have a little patch. You put a patch on your uh, chest wall and 14-day monitoring, and that will send signals to your uh, tel tel cell phone regarding atrial fibrillation or SVT. So uh, then application. So many app apps on your cell phone, uh, and that's changing the whole landscape of the medical care. The only problem is there's so many apps here. There's so many apps that are coming up. but. Uh, uh, but anyway, uh, but they also, along with the apps, there are gadgets you know, for CPR, you have gadgets, you have defibrillators, which are really uh, $30. But in America, where I live, people are going to pay more, more advertisement for McDonald's, which are, you know, there are so many, $285,000 uh, for $13, rather than they, they don't pay for gadgets, but they pay for the McDonald's, uh, which is a heart attack causing food, you know, right? So it's, uh, it's amazing. So the coming up, talking about the applications, so many applications, free applications, so they're going, they're increasing, multiplying in numbers. It's very confusing. Uh, so many applications that uh, uh, it, it have to be, they have to be simplified. So get ready for so-called, people are going crazy. They're always on the cell phone, they're typing, they're talking. Get ready for the so-called cyberchondria, like a, you know, hypochondria, cyberchondria. People are going to get crazy. That will, cyberchondria is causing health anxiety too. You can, you can see your heart rate increases, blood pressure increases. This is a new form of stress. So what they're saying is there are so many apps, 165,000 health-related apps. They have to be, uh, they have to become smaller in number so they become simpler and easier so you can see. So um, that's why I say, well, Malcolm Gladwell, there was a, it's a very, uh, what do you call, New York bestseller uh, book writer. He lives in New York City. He said, the great access to data comes with greater responsibility, and he says that there's a shift from most industries simply not organized. They're not organized, they're kind of jumbo, mumbo jumbo, all kinds of apps. They have to be more organized, more streamlined. Otherwise, you don't get many apps, only couple, five maybe. So uh, the technology is multiplying, improving so fast. This is one of the last slides. So fast that in 10, 20 years from now, all these technological gadgets put together, simplified, miniaturized, you'll say, Arthur Clark says, this is nothing but magic. You'll have a magic. So, um, thank you very much. I just want to tell you, the other day I went to my, this the gentleman who was supposed to present this topic, uh, my son, uh, I went to his place uh, in California, and then he put the glasses uh, on me, uh, just virtual reality glasses. Some of you might, may have them. He t took me to the uh, bottom of the ocean, with, I was in the ocean, and a shark was trying to attack me. So you, you have, that's the, kind, that's the kind of situation. We can use it for medical field. We can all get together in the, on the podium, but you don't have to be here. You can be at lunch. So this is what will happen in 10 years from now. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Professor Ravi, for finishing before time. We have got a few minutes. Yeah, we have five minutes and for discussion. If they person. allow, we can uh, have a few questions. Any questions? Uh, Come and sit down, sir. Yes, sir. That's a very excellent, excellent uh, presentation. You can talk about any topic. I hope we don't lose our stethoscope. We won't look like doctors anymore then. A stethoscope? What about stethoscope? I hope we don't lose it. I, I, I actually, unfortunately, I still use my stethoscope <laughs> because I'm an old timer, so I still diagnose. But uh, the gadgets actually right here, they're getting, getting perfected. Actually, I heard that Eric Tobel got 
$200 million grant that uh, my son works with uh, for uh, gadget improvement, improvement of gadgets. So they're putting all together. So like 10 years from now, Rakesh, you'll be in uh, Florida, uh, Tampa, talking to some gentleman in India or Australia, maybe China, and then they say, what do you do for that? And then they will say, you tell them stem cells, whatever. Uh, so this, yeah. this is going ha to happen. It's just happening right now. Thank you. Very good. Excellent. Is there any other question? I think there are no questions. I just want to oh, say, yes, sir, please, would you use microphone there? Do uh, you want to use? Uh, I think, yeah, I would like to ask one question. I think uh, one thing which has been said against the medical industry is that we're very difficult and resistant uh, to adopt digital technologies. That's been said again and again, that we're one of the few industries very resistant, more so because we go through the clinical dry, uh, trial uh, route to validate everything. Uh, what do you have to say in terms of the ability of doctors to embrace new technologies. Oh, okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, basically, there's a reason for resistance because, uh, you see, now my boss used to say, Dr. Weber used to say, uh, technology should make it easy. If you, it's like a good example, I, mean, I hope there are no Microsoft followers here. Compare Microsoft with uh, Apple, Apple company. Steve Jobs said, make it simpler, okay? If you had to use three, three clicks, throw it out. You threw it out, threw first uh, five designs into the garbage. So problem is, if you make it complicated, nobody will use it. You know, people are people, are human beings. We keep it, make, keep it simple. If Apple phone is simple, that's why Apple and Samsung are used. So no offense, but technology people should realize the ordinary people are not going to use complicated things. You have to make it simpler. So, but people are making it simpler. Once you make it simple, like uh, this, uh, now I have an Apple watch right now, okay? I don't have to program it. It tells me how long I have to walk, I have to get up. It tells me sometimes stand up in the middle of the conference. It tells me, uh, it gives me a message, uh, but it's very simple. I'm not saying I don't have to program it. If I have to program it, they'll say, no, 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 I don't have time. Dr. Sainan will say, I don't have time for this. And uh, Dr. Sharma will say, he's doing angioplasty or stem cells or whatever. He doesn't, doesn't have time to program. This is a problem. Uh, Vinod Khosla has famously said that there'll come a point where like the way the planes are flown today, more by computers and less by pilots. Do you see a phase where doctors will get empowered oh, yeah. uh, through digital data coming in? Yeah, the, actually, uh, to be honest with you, uh, the uh, U.S. government is going to make, they're already making it mandatory for doctors. Uh, but they're actually, you know, they, they're pushing all these electronics on doctors. Doctors are complaining. There's a pushback. But now they're saying, okay, we can make it simpler. So there's an interaction here. So they say, you say, doctor, we have to use it. Government of India says, we have to use it. Mr. Modi says, you have to use it. Now, where's the broadband? Now, Mr. Modi is coming out with the broadband, which is an excellent idea. Now, I think India will be one of the first countries in the world, along with Korea and other countries. Broadband will be universally available, which is going to be a lot of expense. Once you have broadband, that's it. I mean, that's it. Now you have a watch, you have a necklace, you have a little vest, and then you have glasses. That's it. They all put type, tie them together, and then you'll be sitting in Hyderabad or Delhi or wherever you want to sit. And you, can, you are the one organizing it, and it's a troubleshooting, they'll come, they will call you. There was a troubleshooting. Otherwise, the China will talk to somebody in Delhi or somebody. If, Five, ten years maximum. Thank you, Professor Ravi. Dr. Dr. Manik Tala wants to ask a question. Thank you. Question? I mean, there is so much technology there. Why don't you actually reduce the size of the, the probe used for echo, just yes. to bin the size? Exactly. Put it under the skin. Exactly. And send the patient home. You can recall the images from wherever you want. You're right. By Bluetooth. You're right. So that will be. And one other thing I'm worried is medicine is a field where doctor is a healer. And also, not only that, more like a, I mean, personal touch. Sure. For more and more personal touch is going to be lost. But How the patient your, will get the confidence? What your, no, actually, that, that's where he comes in. Uh, he's the authenticator. The virtual reality is already here. You know, you're reading. Mm -hmm. uh, every, all the companies in the world, including Sony, are making virtual reality glasses. They're ex inexpensive. I'm sure you have them in the shops here, if you go to Mumbai or Delhi. What I'm trying to say is, you have them already. The only thing is, but what you're saying is somebody might masquerade as a doctor. I think you're right. Yes. But that's a, that's a legal problem. But that's where their company comes in. Because you're recently right. I saw one medical student, mm -hmm. he was wearing a band, right. which gives a heart rate. Right. But that was running so erratic, when he was walking, heart rate went to 300. Seeing that, you collapsed. Yeah. Then I had to do a treadmill and show to him that it was not his heart rate, it was something to do with that gadgetry. Yeah. So when you go for more gadgetry, that to electronic, they are so run, like a runaway pacemaker, there may be a runaway BP my apparatus also. I remember a vice president of TVS who saw his BP could not be recorded, he collapsed, thinking he is a bypass. Just one month ago it was done. 
then actually it was the mistake of the gadgetry. So yes. when the patient is given the gadgetry, what happens? There are a lot of uh, chances for uh, you such actually, uh, mistakes. You're making, you're making excellent points. Uh, I think you are absolutely correct. What happens is, but that's why they have to make them better and better. When the computer came, I'm an old timer, I'm an old timer. I'm, pretty, I'm older than you probably. The only thing is I didn't want to use computer. But now I use computer every day. So it's, it's a process. No, no, but medicine must have yes. personalized touch of a yeah. doctor. I if you just go on having more and more home-based equipments, gadgetries, then say cell phone can function as an echo machine. I swear it is good because if you could find a bindi size uh, transducer, put it under the skin, like the implantable, uh, this thing, uh, right. event recorders, it will be useful. Well, okay. But uh, sometimes overdoing uh, of things may also have the opposite effect on the society. Sir, so if I might… If I might step in, ma'am, uh, I think what you're trying to say is well taken, but uh, this will enable doctors to become better because once they have more data in front of them, no, no, right? So I think what we need to do is embrace this digital technology. Only one point I want to stress, I want Seven doctors to be truly human, not humanoids and robotoids. Okay. Well, it's going to happen, I'm so sorry, uh, but uh, it's happening already. Unless you, you can, we can take you to space otherwise. Yeah. That, if that's you want to travel space, we can take you there unless you are robot robotized. Yes, that okay, yeah, I think we'll have to move ahead. Give a big hand to both the speakers. Yes. They spoke yes. very Sir, well. one yeah. second, Dr. Mani. I, I, uh, I feel very bad that there was hardly any crowd to listen to these people who have come from he's you. You have any more. short questions, sir? Uh, yes, yes, sir. Question. Sir, he's waiting. Sir, my response is to Dr. Sharma's stem cells. Sir, in the beginning of your very awakening this is and you, awareness talk, you use the word legal issues. And in one of your slides later on, you have used the word transplantation of those cells. Right. Now, which basically means that stem cells is a transplant issue. Right. Sir, in our country, I do not know about the USA, but in our, our country, Should we face to too many legal bad. laws. And transplant, organ transplant laws are very, very, I would say, impractical to some extent. All they, to my opinion, not the governments, it is just causing a black market and showing that everybody else is a bloody crook. My suggestion, sir, is that if at all you propose to use stem cells in cardiology, the cardiologists here in India must start moving the papers right now rather than waiting till they have, we have achieved something and we are not able to perform. Because all these laws are going to be made in the parliament, which is a very, very, very long issue. My only suggestion is an awareness and um, a, a suggestion for you people to take up. And also, if possible, change the organ laws. Thank you, sir. Very well said. Okay, very thank well you very much, sir. I think this was his comment. Do you want to comment anything, Rakesh? Well, I, I, if, I, if I may, uh, number one, very good comments. Number two, uh, the cell, once we inject the cell, the transplantation means the cell goes into the circulation somewhere and hopefully they get retained and theoretically we call that transplant and they get transplanted and hopefully then they secrete some hormones and make it better. It is true that it we, there's a so much misguidance, we need to get it right. If you look at the physiology, there's no question about that, we are made of cells, and if there's a perfect cell, it can go to repair much more than pharmacological intervention can do it. But we need a good trial, and a good cell, and cultured properly, and everybody has to be on the same page, rather than being that all black market used. That's why I'm saying it has gotten a bad name, and that's why my first half of the presentation was really kind of making aware that yes, it has a potential, but we are not happy the way it's going. But the forwarding looking statements, I think down the line in five years or 10 years, we probably will have some very good cells which will actually help a lot of people in all kind of problems. Okay, Mr. Chairman, that's all the time that we have. I request uh, Brigadier Senani and other chairpersons to kindly present our uh, mementos and our certificates of citation to our speakers. Professor Rakesh Sharma and Professor Hanuman. Well, please clap hands for both the speakers who have done a wonderful job. Now we will just offer them a moment of an. All of you, please come. I would also request Dr. Shankar, Professor Arthi, and our other chairman to please join us.
uh, Dr. A.K. Jain to please join us. Thank you. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for chairing the proceedings and along with our uh, speakers.